Ah, young royal, you dressed up. And here I was worried you'd make some sort of protest. You look great, for what it's worth. Ah, let's go. We've only got so many more daylight hours. And I want you in public for as long as possible. Do you have something to say to the court? Or should I do the talking for you? If you are too embarrassed to speak, I'll allow it this time. But I remind you that the entire point of this display session is to force you to be comfortable in your own skin. Eventually, you will have to talk. Well then, here we are. Remember, stand tall, proud. You are the royal heir and a plenty good magician. No one here has any reason to look down on you. Your Majesties? If it would please the court, I would present your golden child and heir to the throne, embracing their true form. A few weeks ago, you appointed me to train them to control their new abilities. Today, I come to you asking for permission to teach them in an unorthodox way. I wish to take them on a stroll through the marketplace. Yes, I do believe that a public display is completely necessary. In fact, I'd move that your little heir should take as many opportunities as possible to be seen in their true form. I really must insist, my lieges. Splendid. We'll away at once. We shouldn't need to wait for any bodyguard or decoy. I'm sure that between the two of us, we can handle ourselves. Farewell, and thank you, wise advisors of the court. Human markets are just so cozy, don't you think? Look around. Lots of warm colors. Soft din of haggling. And the smell of far-off spices everywhere. If you were going to pick a place that was exposed yet comforting, you'd be hard-pressed to find one better than here. Yes, I suppose I am tooting my own horn a little, but truly is this so bad? We've only been walking around for a moment, but almost no one has even noticed you. People who do barely give you a second glance. No, it's not because they don't care. It's because they do. Any trader worth their salt has been to more than just a single kingdom. Everyone here has likely seen at least a couple of other civilized races. You may look odd to them, but the average person is surprisingly tolerant when push comes to shove. Yes, there may be a few close-minded people here. That is simply how life goes. Some people are a little more, let's say, xenophobic. I'm sure we'll encounter someone like that eventually. But therein lies the real test. Hearing what they have to say, realizing they're dead wrong, and moving on. I assure you, no one is going to become violent. Not only is this a very public place with very rigid, unwritten rules, but you are not to be messed with. You're well-dressed, clearly a noble, walking with a purpose. The average swamp dweller will know better than to raise their fists, and if they don't, you have a myriad of spells that can stop a fight before it starts. My dear royal, any spell can be used in combat. A fight of the body is first and foremost a fight of the mind. If you quickly use the light spell, you could disorient a foe. You could place a shield around someone to stop them in their tracks. Or you could simply light a fire or lift something heavy and scare off your opponent. Trust me, the sort of person who would come to arms over something as trivial as race as a coward and a fool... As soon as they realize you aren't an easy target, and that they cannot bully you into submission, they will crumble. 
Now, I think that's enough of my philosophical musings for one day. We're here to get you comfortable. We've got more than enough coin to grab anything that catches your eye, so where to first, little royal? I will follow your lead. The air smells sweet here. Are we close to a bakery? Ah, you know the baker. Well then, I'm sure we can have a pleasant chat. After you. My, that smell is near overpowering. There must be enough sugar in the air to kill a whale. Tell you what, why don't I go find us a table, and you can go talk to your baker. Wonderful. Young Royal yelled back rather quickly. What did you get us? Hmm, they look delicious. Please, sit. So, could you tell me why you picked this place? Well, it certainly wasn't close. Did your mother always take you here when you were younger? Do you just really like the scones? And you were sure the fairies fluttering around had nothing to do with it? Little Royal, you can give up the facade. In addition to the fairies, the baker is a shoggoth, and I think I saw some burrowers working the oven. This isn't a normal bakery. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I just fear for your motives. You ventured across the entire market to come to what I suspect is the one place you knew you'd be guaranteed to be accepted. A place where everyone wasn't human. No, I understand completely why you do this. And since this is your first dip into the deep end, I'll allow it. But this isn't exactly what I had in mind when I said you'd be paraded around. These people were never going to think poorly of you. And while I didn't want you to be shunned, per se, I did want you to face some adversity. Yes, I suppose we did walk quite a way to get here. That is worth something, I just... What I'm doing is for your own good. You do realize that, don't you? You're a smart kid. I'm sure you could subvert every plan of action I came up with if you had tried hard enough. And if you can find semantic loopholes in a demon's deals, then the butlers and knights have no chance of forcing you to step out of your comfort zone when I'm not here. So, I'd like it if you promised me something. The point of this little lesson was to get you to an end goal. Namely, that one morning you'd wake up, and you wouldn't need a disguise. One morning you'd simply think, I don't need to hide who I am. Promise me that you'll get there one day. Promise me that you won't let a little unearned shame hold you back. Thank you, little royal. Now that we've dropped our pretenses, let's head back to the counter. I'm sure a magical bakery has some goodies a little more elaborate than a blueberry scone.